The cost of German anti-nuclear activism. Success is a point of view, and not all viewpoints are equal or valid. Let's see why the German energy transition is a complete and utter failure. Not just that, it's also outright dangerous, as it creates the delusion that phasing out nuclear and implementing renewables is a successful strategy. Let's examine the figures and find out what we can learn. These figures come directly from Fraunhofer. Upon request, I received a JSON data file containing all the data I requested. These are the 2016 day-to-day -day generation figures for German electricity. I am not looking at import balance or load. I just want to know how much electricity was generated. First, we note that high carbon emitting coal, gas and biomass are still running very strong in Germany. The end of coal is still not in the picture and I doubt it will be in the decades to come. I even question whether they will shut down their nuclear reactors in the 2020s. First, we are going to check how these 2016 figures stack up. Here we see a plot of the day-to-day -day percentage of generation for high carbon energy, wind and solar, and nuclear energy. On average, wind and solar generated about 21% of all the electricity and nuclear 14.5%, which leaves about 61% for high carbon lignite, coal, gas and biomass. Together, nuclear, wind and solar generate about 35% of Germany's electricity. Let's add some extra context. Fukushima happened in March 2011, and on June 30th of that same year, Germany, under the leadership of Angela Merkel, decided that they wanted to push through with the elimination of their nuclear capacity. This led to the closure of eight nuclear power plants in 2011 and one in 2015, with a combined capacity of roughly 12 gigawatts. Suppose they didn't do this and we take this through logically, we can determine how much this would add to the average daily nuclear generation figures. In 2016, the average daily production for nuclear was about 196 gigawatt hours. Capacity-wise, they are at 10.8 gigawatts. So we use this formula to figure out what the capacity factor was for nuclear in 2016. 196 gigawatt hours divided by 24 hours is 8.18 gigawatts. This means that the capacity factor of nuclear in Germany is a lowly 76%. If we add the lost capacity to the extant capacity, we would have 22.9 gigawatts of capacity in Germany and it would add, on average, 417 gigawatt hours per day. So now we compare what we have today with what we could have had today if the Germans didn't suffer from a massive and collective stroke back in 2011. We would have had 54% of low-carbon wind, water, solar and nuclear energy instead of 35.3%. So that's the first failure they could have had about 20% more carbon neutral electricity generation today if only they kept their nuclear capacity up and running. They would have gotten a decarbonization target inside for electricity. How different is it today? Instead, the Germans have opted to use black coal as the backup for the wind and solar fantasy totally negating any of the perks provided by the non-carbon nature of capturing electricity with these technologies. And if you don't believe me, consider this graph. Here you can see clearly that biomass, hydro, nuclear and lignite power are the most stable. But that hard coal, gas, wind and solar fluctuate heavily. That's right, they are ramping black coal up and down to catch the intermittency of wind and solar. In this graph, I rearrange the technologies to show you what wind and solar actually do in a grid context. That's strike two. Grid stability suffers from intermittency and requires more management. And now we are going to consider what could have been one if lignite was shut down rather than nuclear. What is the carbonate intensity of 1 gigawatt hour of electricity generated by burning lignite? 
A study by the World Nuclear Organization estimates the carbon dioxide emissions per gigawatt for lignite to be about 1,000 tons per gigawatt hour. So let's see what would have happened if we had closed down 220 gigawatt hours per day worth of lignite burning. So that's about 2100 days over the, last, over the past 6 years in which we had 220 gigawatt hours at 1000 tons per gigawatt hour. That's a whopping 470 million tons of carbon dioxide. And the funny thing here is that at COP23 the German energy transition was being sold off as a great success. But look at what they did to their infographics. And look what it actually should look like. So they are not only ineffective, they're also willfully misguiding people. This is basically lying by omission, and that's strike three. But we are not done yet. How deadly is a gigawatt hour from lignite? The mortality rate of coal is about 100,000 per trillion kilowatt hours. So that equals 100,000 per 1 million gigawatt hours. The Germans roughly generated about 470,000 gigawatt hours from lignite in that, in that same period. So by this measure, they have killed another 47,000 people since they willfully decided to keep their lignite power plants open and shut down their nuclear reactors. Just think about it, that's about 8,000 Europeans per year. This is one of the things that bothers me as a humanist. These kinds of choices are indefensible. Finally, I want to show you that the claims that wind and solar amount to a lot in Germany is generally untrue. I've only found a handful of days in which wind and solar managed to get up to 50% of the total electricity generation. Worse, these were low demand Saturdays and Sundays. And consider these figures for the lowest energy demand days in Germany. On June 4, 2016, nuclear, wind and solar managed to reach up to 76.45% of the total electricity generation. If you add some hydro and the lost capacity of those reactors that were shut down, I would bet that Germany could have had their very first carbon-free electricity day ever. Other days when this could possibly happen would be Christmas. But we're not there yet at all. The Germans chose coal and gas and biomass over nuclear power. In summary, the German energy transition has not helped to decarbonize the country. It did the opposite. They have added half a gigaton of unnecessary emissions and killed roughly 50,000 people in the process. Now don't get me wrong, the Germans aren't the only ones to blame here. My own country, for instance, is just as bad as we use fossil fuels for roughly 90% of all our electricity. We are killing people too. So let's stop with this idea that renewables can do it alone, but also that we don't need nuclear. It's a double-edged sword that actually kills. And that's it for this video. Please subscribe and click the thumbs up button. But even more important, if you want to help me take care of my family, help me pay the bills, but also help me create more content for the channel, consider supporting me on Patreon. You can find the link in the description below. And let me take this opportunity to thank all the patrons that have supported me so far. Your help is invaluable. Thank you all for watching and have a nice day.